Hi friends, it's Mr. Wedge. Today we're going to make a gothic cathedral collage. So I've got a bunch of different colored papers here and the first thing I'm going to do is pick a background color. So I've got my gray paper. This is important. We'll need that. The white's important. We'll need that too. But all these uh, construction papers, you can just pick your favorite color. And then I'll save the rest for another project another time. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my name on the blue paper, well your colored paper, whatever that is, because that's going to be the background. So my name, my class code for something. And then I'm going to find my um, gray paper, kind of looks like stone or something, that's like stone texture. So first thing I'll do is put my block pattern on there because Gothic cathedrals are made out of cut stones that are stacked up. So the way I like to do that is I'm working the vertical way and I'm just going to put a bunch of horizontal lines across. You could use a ruler to do that if you want, but they don't have to be perfect. And then the next step is I'm going to put the individual bricks in, so lots of little vertical lines going across in the rows. But here's the thing. See that pattern? The next one underneath it, I'm going to start in between those. So this is how brick walls are made. Um, and uh, the stones on a gothic cathedral because when you stack the blocks you don't want to put one exactly on top of each other because then you just have a bunch of towers of blocks that are going to fall over. But if you put them on this way they'll lock together and it's really strong. So I'm going to keep going. The first row I did is going to be exactly like the third row I did, I'm going to do. But every time you do it, you're going to make sure you put the lines in between the ones on top. And I'm going to go all the way down and do that. That's a basic brick pattern. And uh, I like to flip the paper over for this next part. So I'm going to draw the outline of a gothic cathedral, the front of the building. So I'll start with the main building part, but I'm leaving space so I can add on to it later. Like we might have two towers right here. Just two rectangles on top of a big one. Um, we could put spires on top of those. And then uh, Gothic cathedrals usually have something called flying buttresses. And a buttress is just like a piece of the building that sticks up against it to hold the walls in. Because remember, these are stacked up blocks of stone. So if you add little uh, pieces of, you know, more building on the side, it kind of holds the walls so the whole building doesn't collapse. But because these had stained glass windows, they'd kind of uh, detach them a little bit. It's really genius. And that way you'd have more room to let light in. So they had more room for these big glass windows. So uh, flying buttress is almost like it kind of slopes out and down like this. And then this part's the column and this part's the top of it. And it's symmetrical. This whole building's symmetrical. But then you've got part of it that might come up like this and curve in. And this is just a piece that holds the... They're almost like arms that kind of hold the building so it doesn't fall over. And then you can add other little details, you know, maybe you could see gargoyles sticking out the top like this. They're going to be real small though. Maybe I'll add more down here. Now I'm getting really fancy. You don't have to add all these, but Gothic cathedrals were pretty fancy. You could add little extra details in the bottom like blocks for the foundation. So once you get the shape of your Gothic cathedral that you like, we can get some scissors and cut it out. So once you get the shape of your gothic cathedral cut out, we can flip it over, see what it looks like. We're going to glue this 
onto our colored paper, whatever your background is. And if you accidentally cut anything off, like I almost cut off this gargoyle right here, I didn't do it, but if I had, I could just glue it back on, because now we're going to glue the whole thing down. And I like to glue the, the background. I like to put the glue on the background, but it's up to you how you do it. You just want to make sure you have enough glue so that it's stuck down, but not too much that it's a huge mess. So now I'll carefully flip it over and stick it down. And then I can work on my windows once I get this all stuck down. Nice and flat. When you do a collage, you want everything glued down nice and flat so it's like a painting. So there we go. I'll set this aside and let it dry. And then I can work on windows. One of the kinds of windows you see in um, Gothic cathedrals is a rose window. It's just a big round window right in the front of the building with a lot of fancy designs in it. And I just found a cup to trace. So I'm going to put it on my paper, trace it, and then I can cut it out. Because you you could just freehand a circle, but if you trace something that's round, then you get a very perfect circle. And if you know Mr. Wedge, he likes to do a rough cut first, and then a careful cut. There we go. And so now I can glue this down. It'll be right there. So rose window is one kind of window that you would see on a gothic cathedral. Um, but the other kinds are, you know, just regular windows, but they have pointed arches on top. So they almost have a shape that, look, it's flat on the bottom. They're very tall and skinny. And then they're pointy at the top, but they kind of curve in to get there. So they're all going to have this shape. Well, there's a little trick to doing that. What I'll do is just cut a strip of paper out. And then I can fold the whole thing in half. And if it's not exactly in half, you can trim it like this. And now I can cut this into little sections. I might save the biggest one for the door, actually. So if you can see, it's like a book. It opens like a book. So this corner where the fold is, that's going to be my point. So I'm going to kind of curve away from that. Or you can curve up into it. Kind of like that. So then when I open it, it's got that pointed arch look. So I'm going to use that for my door. And now with the rest of them, I can do the same thing. I might make them a little skinnier, but I can just make more pointed arches for windows and glue those down. So you can put them where you want as long as everything's symmetrical, so the same on both sides. I'm actually going to add a few steps here in front of my door, just some horizontal lines. And now I can uh, color in the windows, and it's totally up to you how you decorate them as long as they're symmetrical. So same on both sides. And a rose window has radial symmetry. So it means that any way you split it, it's always going to be symmetrical.
So it's up to you how you color your stained glass windows. You just want it to be colorful and symmetrical. There's a Gothic cathedral. Work hard, have fun.